I'm going to add to it today. Now you're going to make up the equations. Okay? You are going to start making up the inequalities yourself. Okay? All right, so let's start with basic. Basic one right here. Okay, let's use this figure. We're going to write a system of inequalities, which means two or more. Okay, write two or more. But I need to your inequalities to describe where the forest occurs. So I need you to put proper symbols so I would sh the overlapping shaded regions would overlap where the forest is. See what I mean? Let me give you a little visual here. That's what I need right now. Equations with correct symbols that would say shade above, shade above, so they intersect where the forest is. All right. Uh, nice little thing I gave you here was I gave you the equation of both lines. All right, so what's the equation of the bottom line? Okay, I'm going to leave the equal out because we know we have to have an inequality there if we're going to shade. E and something with negative 140. All right. Where do I need to shade so I'm in the forest here? Above or below this line? Above. So what do I want? Zero, zero to be included. So I don't want it to work when I plug it in. So now we got to figure out what sign do I need for zero, zero not to work. Okay, let's, ready? Let's plug in zero, zero now. What do I, what would I get here if I plugged in zero, zero? Zero. And I still have that negative 140 over there. But remember, I want to shade away from it, which means I don't want it to work. So what type of symbol would I need here for it to be false? To be false. To be false, I would need a what symbol here? Less than, right? That would be false. Everyone agrees? Okay, perfect. Still missing something, though. It's a solid line. So you're going to tell me to put in? Or equal to. There's one done. There's one done. Questions? All right, next equation. What's the equation of the other line? It's right on there. 5t minus 7p. And I got to compare that to 70 now. And where do you guys want to shade on this line? Away from 0, 0 still, right? Away from 0, 0. All right, let's do the same thing. Ready? 0. 70, but I want it to be false. I don't want it to be a solution. So how would this be false? Greater than, right? And I hear some of you chiming in too. It also has to have A or equal to attached because it's a solid line. Yep. Okay, everybody good? Any issues going? I want the equation so it would cover the forest. Because when you get back on Monday, same diagram, but now give me two equations that cover the grassland. So now you would have to do above and below on that one. That's where we're going on Monday. But everyone, all right, th this would be the correct shading to include the forest. Good? You ready to make these up on your own now? Okay. We're only going to start with one, though. Okay, one. We got to crawl before we walk here. All right, we're only going to start with one. Read through it. Just re read through uh, the first part A. Because I I don't want to do it for you here. I want everyone to uh, chip in here and have uh, the inequality written all together. So, read about the elevator and kids' weights and adult weights. Okay, what are my variables? X and Y. What's X again? Children. That's the number of children. And Y is number of adults. Can we write an inequality? Ready? Got to read carefully here. So the elevator will be overloaded. Overloaded. All right, who wants to start here with uh, the child? How do I start this inequality with the child? How much does he weigh? He or she weigh? So how do I represent that? 50 times the number of kids I have, X, plus, go adults now. 
150 average adult times y. You're going to overload it. Overload it. Greater, should I put the or equal to? No. Perfect. Because capacity, it's 2,000 or less. So greater than 2,000. We okay with the inequality there? You're only going to write that one, and now we're going to graph it. Okay. Why are x and y, why must they be positive? You can't have a negative number of kids or adults, right? So instead of doing this now on the graph, instead of having this type of graph, we're only going to do quadrant one. Y quadrant one, that's where x and y are both positive. Perfect. All right, here we go. So go ahead, you guys could set up your arrows, and then uh, we'll have to talk about how we're going to write this. What numbers we need there. Okay, we are doing word problems, so I do need labels, unfortunately. Yeah, I'm going to require that you have labels. What's the X mean again? Number of children. I do need this. I have, I'm sorry, but it's got to happen. What's Y? Number of adults. I don't need a title, though. I just need the axes labeled so I know what we're talking about. Okay, next thing. What's this going to go by? What's this going to go by? Uh, well, first I need to determine those intercepts. Remember doing those? Zero comma something, something comma zero. Remember doing those? That'll tell me how far on the X and the Y I got to go out. So you guys want to find those numbers for me right now? Plug in zero for X and zero for Y and solve for the other variable. You will get a decimal on one of them. Don't worry. So when you plugged in 0 for x, what was your y value? About 13.3? Okay, just make sure. Let me know if you don't get that. And then when you plugged in 0 for y and divided both sides by 50? 40. Okay, so on the x-axis, I at least need to have what on there? 40. And on the y, I at least need to have 13.3. I can go past there, though. So here we go. Suggestions on the x-axis for me. Fives, I like it spread out. I don't want a little, I don't want this. On the X axis first, I gotta have 40 on it. Fives, all right? Fives, we okay with fives? I'm just skipping every one, that's why it looks like I'm going by tens, just so you know. And then what about on the Y axis? I don't have to go by the same on the y-axis. Ones, sure. Okay, then go ahead, plot your points. Zero, 13.3. Ooh, I see it already. You guys that are grabbing your straight edge. What type of line? Dotted. It's not or equal to. We got to make this thing dotted. And are you guys ready to test zero, zero?
what's this going to look like? What do we get on the left of the inequality? Is 0 greater than 2,000? I don't think so. So we're shading above the line, away from 0, 0. Yep. Give you guys a minute, have your coloring fun. All right, now we got part C. Can anybody give me a nice ordered pair, an XY point that's in that inequality? Just one one voice, that's all I need. 50, comma two. And what's that, what's that mean? 50 comma 2, what's that mean? I know it's a solution in there, but as far as the problem goes now, 50 kids, are, 50 kids and two adults will overload the elevator. It would. 40 and 6 adults. Well, thir yeah. How about 39 and 8 adults? That would overload it. Any, everybody good? Okay, we're good. All right, now, last one, last one we're going to do. A couple inequalities now, multiple inequalities. So this is where we have our fung all shading here now. Okay, before we call it a break here, can we come up with these on our own here? So you guys can read through. We're going to invest some money, but luckily for us, there's no percents here. All right, so two, two equations here, two variables. Let's talk variables first. Where am I going to put my money in? High or low risk? Yep, all right. Is every, I'm just going to call X high. That's the first one I see up here. So that's the amount in high risk. And then Y will be the amount and low risk. Okay. Some strange things are going to happen here, so just stay with me. You ready? Three equations. What, what are they? I think you got one, Pat? Uh, X plus y. Okay, whoa, whoa. X plus Y, and then what? I don't want you to tell me the inequality symbol, but it's going to involve what number up here? 15,000. All right, so everybody good. That's the total amount of money, but it says no more. No more, so no equals here. No more than 15,000. What inequality symbol am I going to put? No more. Less than, can it be 15,000? No more than 15, right? So I'm going to attach the or equal to to it. We good there? Okay. Who's finding the second equation now? At least 2,000 is placed in the high risk. What's high risk? What's high? Well, get the variable first. What's high risk? X and 2,000 at least. Greater than? Think about it. You have at least $10 in your pocket. 10 or more, right? 
10 or greater. And the final one, the amount invested at low risk, what's low risk? Okay, ready? Should be at least, at least three times the high risk. Three, definitely 3x, right? At least. What's up? Questions? Any issues from you guys? Label. What's x again? What's x again? Okay, so amount in high risk. And again, why am I only sticking to quadrant one on this one too? Amount of money. Can't be negative, right? So that's why I'm only going to go positive X and Y in the first quadrant. So amount in high risk on the X. Amount in low risk on the Y. All right, ready for that first one? What are my intercepts? Plug in zero, plug in zero for Y, for X and Y. Also known as 15,000. <laughs> So I at least need to have what on the X and the Y? 15,000. I got 2,000 too there to deal with, but that'll be in between anyway. So what are we going here? I think I can go by 1,000s, can I? I can go by 1,000s. Now, I don't know how you guys feel, but I really don't feel like doing this. So and squishing it in. What can I do instead here? Under uh, what you put amount in high risk, you get the three times the CDs of thousands. Yes, there you go. So now I can just put what here now? One, yep, two, there you go. And can I do that on the y axis? I can do that on the y-axis too, yep. What's going on? I'm just doing in thousands in the, both of them. Because it would be a mess for me anyway if I had to write the zeros in. All right, go ahead. 15,000, 15,000 on the X and the Y. Solid or dashed when you get to this point. Yep. Oh, get solid up. No shading yet. Remember, if I have three or more, I only want to try to shade where they're, I know they're going to overlap. But let's talk right now. Let's talk. Where would I shade if I wanted to just do a whole mess here? Zero, zero. Does it work? Okay, keep, keep that in mind. I'm going to shade down here. So it's got to be somewhere here now. All right, next. Come on now, we've done a lot of work on this this week. X, X. Straight up and down. Vertical line. Solid or dashed? Okay, whoa, whoa, ready? Greater than 2,000, where would I shade? To the right or to the left? To the right. So everyone see my region now. 
and I got one more to go. All right, so I'm going to make this region a little smaller. Now, here is the whole catch to this, and that's this bad boy. Because watch what happens if you do your intercepts. Ready? I'll do them with you. Plug in zero for X. What do you get for your Y? Zero. Okay, so you get zero, zero. Yeah. Now plug in zero for Y. Zero. Divide both sides by, th by three. What's zero divided by three? Zero. So you're going to get zero, zero, both intercepts. That doesn't help me. Right? That doesn't help me. But it's already Y equals. You guys remember how to graph these way back in the day? Oh, you we didn't need intercepts. I start at zero, zero. Yep. Start at zero, zero. What's the slope? Up one, two, three to the right one. Up one, two, three to the right one. There we go. Solid or dashed. And there's going to be another issue that comes up. And the issue is going to be uh, when you test our good old point zero zero. Yeah, where are you going to tell me to shade towards or away? I can't. It's on there. And even if you did plug in zero zero, what's going to happen? You get zero on the left and zero on the right. Oh, that's because you can't test a point that's on the line. We've never had to worry about that because zero zero was on none of the lines we've had graphed so far this week. But now it is. So what's my solution? Hey, pick another one. Pick another point that's not on the line. Another easy point. <laughs> four, four, sure. Six, four, four, four. You got it. We'll test four, four instead. So you can't test zero, zero if it's on the line. So here you go. Is four greater than or equal to 12? True or false? False. So locate where four, four is. I want to shade away from that. So everyone see where my overlapping would be? Remember, hey, remember it was here, but now I'm shading up. Go ahead. I want to see you fill that in. Where do you think that, where do you think they're all going to overlap? It should. This is where we're going. And uh oh, uh oh, boy, oh. Hey, hold on, hold on. Hey, take a look. Some of you guys aren't seeing it still. It was this right here, right? Until we got to this line where we said what? Shade below or above it? Above it, right? So it's this little thing. It can't be down here, right? Right? It can't be down there. This was my region before I graphed the last line. I know it doesn't ask it, just so I know we can end on a good note here. Based on these conditions, give me an amount of high risk and low risk I could invest under these conditions. How much in the high risk can I put in? $3,000 and how much in the low risk could I invest? 10,000, 11,000, 8,000, yes. Okay, all right. We'll work on that when we come back from break. Relax, have a great break, behave. Nothing stronger than ginger ale, remember. Actually, ginger ale is pretty strong. Nothing People stronger it than it. Here.